Hello. So today we're going to take a look at is ensuring our network is set up properly for our recently installed instance of Debian. Again, I'm going to be using the example that I set up for our web service security course in the information security program here at RRC Polytechnic. So we will be logging in and verifying our network settings. I have my instance of Debian running here. I just fired it up and it wants me to log in. Now, in general, you should always log in as a regular user and only log in as root when necessary. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to log in with my regular account. Okay. I'm logged in as a regular user and I want to verify my network settings. I'm going to use the IP commands. In this case, I'm going to verify the address of my IP configurations. And as you can see here, I have loopback configured, which is working fine. I have my ENP0S3, which is the adapter on our NAT configuration. That is the adapter we configured to use internet connectivity and it is reporting an address of 10.0.2.15 and that's pretty typical. I don't think I've seen an exception to that in VirtualBox with Debian or most operating systems on a Windows environment. The third adapter, ENP0S8, however, does not have an address and we're going to need to configure that to a specific address. We're going to do that right now. Now you could set up a static IP address and there's all kinds of information online. It tends to change from version to version. It's a little more specific. So we're just going to use a dynamic address and make sure that we understand what that dynamic address is. Again, in the real world, you would set a static IP and not allow it to change, especially in a scenario that we have where we use IP address for all of our machine identification and do not use machine names. Because we use IP addresses, it, there is value in setting this to static, but we're just going to set it to dynamic in this video. If you would like to go through the process of static, static IP, uh, see your instructor. So we need to change the settings of our virtual machine. That kind of change cannot be done as a regular user. And I am logged in as a regular user, so I need to become root. We're going to do that with the substitute user or switch user command, SU. Just like that. And I want to not only become root, but I want to reload my shell and my shell information, the variables, the environment, I want to reload that as if I was logged in as root and not logged in as a regular user. I do that with the dash, the uh, simple dash character, the upper right corner of your alphabet keyboard, and that allows me to reload my environment. So not only am I logged in as root, but I have all the environmental settings of root and enter and at this point you have to know the root password as we saw it during the installation oh you should type in the correct password okay and now you can see you are logged in as root perfect now I can go and make the necessary changes there is going to be I don't usually use Nano, I normally use Vi, but I understand that most prefer to use Nano, so that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to use the Nano command line text editor to modify this text configuration file. So I'm going to say Nano, and I'm going to modify the Etsy, the ETC, NETW, and I'm going to hit the tab key, and it auto-completes for me, forward slash, INT. I N T and the tab key and it auto completes again for me. The tab key on your keyboard is your friend. It eliminates typos. 
And when we bring up this configuration file for our network interfaces, we see that our, e our loopback is configured and our ENP0S3, or NAT adapter, is configured. What we need to do is we need to add ENP0S8 and have it configured to use either static or DHCP. So I'm going to say this is the um, host only adapter. You should always comment your configurations, including identifying who you are and when you did it. Okay, I wouldn't do it like that. It would be something like this, 12 September 2023, or whatever date format you would, are comfortable with. You don't need to try and rewrite War and Peace or anything like that. Just be very clear that you are the editor and when you made this change and why, okay? And then it's basically the same except it's ENP0S8, all right? I face ENP0S8 INET DHCP, okay? Typos will get you every time, so just verify. Allow hot plug ENP0S8, I face ENP0S8, INET DHCP, perfect. You can see across the bottom here, the um, caret O means control O to write out or save the file. So I'm gonna hold the control key down and hit O, and it says you want to write it out to that file that we did it before, hit enter. If you get um, an error message, you are probably not logged in as root, okay? So I have saved my work. Again, how did I do that? Control O, and it'll suggest a file name, and I will hit enter for that file name. We wanna overwrite the existing file. And then you can control X to exit. At this point, you should be good to go. Now, there's two choices here. There's two choices. You can actually restart the networking service by the system control restart networking. You can uh, do an IP command that will actually restart. But I like to do a full-on sanity check and make sure that when my system boots up, it is properly configured because just changing the network isn't good enough. Okay, I can do IP adder again. I can do IP adder and verify that just changing the file did not fix this problem. I could restart my network services a couple of different ways, but what I like to do is I actually like to reboot my machine. So I will just type in reboot. When it's logged in as root, reboot should work. That way, I know that when my system comes up back online, I can verify that it boots up and it boots into the proper network settings. And as we talked about in the earlier video, the network address of my host only adapter is part of that host only network and that pool of DHCP or dynamic addresses for my host only network. It's exactly what I want to see. Now that I have my network set up, I can talk to this machine using the necessary tools. We will start with PuTTY. This is the PuTTY configuration tool. You can make and save a session. I'm just going to quickly connect um, to my machine. Actually, I will go through the process of saving a session as well. So I'll connect as SJ. 
all right? And I connect at the IP address that I'm using. And in this case, it's going to be 192.168.56.23253, correction, 253, all right? Typos will get you every time, so you want to verify that. Now I want to save this. This is, um, again, this is uh, InfoSec Server. Give it whatever name you want. Save it so that you can come back and use it in the future. InfoSec Web Server Debian, and then click on Open. The first time it connects, it will want to download this uh, key, this fingerprint. And SSH doesn't just use an algorithm, as you've seen in your encryption class. Not only does it use an algorithm, but ensures the implementation of that algorithm is unique by using, hopefully, unique keys. That key ensures that the implementation of this um, encryption algorithm is unique to these sessions, to this machine and anything that talks to it through tools such as PuTTY. It's saying, do you want to save this fingerprint, this key, as part of your local repositories? There, there is some risk with that, but we are going to say yes. And then it prompts me for my password. And my password is of course generic and now that gives me connection which is handy because now I can use my mouse I can highlight I can copy and paste now what I did was is I highlighted a word and then I hit the alternate mouse button in this case it is the right mouse button now if I hit enter now it's going to say hey those commands are not commands which is of course reasonable all right but I can say, who am I? And I'll say, you are SJ. And I can say, change to the directory of that. And it will take me to that directory. A little bit of a typo there with the backslash. Don't worry about that, please. But we can use our mouse in PuTTY, making it very worthwhile for us to have it properly configured. For those of you who are in class with me, you know I also like to go into the settings go into the appearance, change the font, make it larger and bold so that my students can see what I'm doing. It makes it easier for them and it should be easier for you out there in YouTube land as well. Now that I've made that change, of course, um, I need to go in and save those changes. So if I go into my window appearance, and I change my font, let's say I'm going to change it to that, OK. I need to go back to session. I need to save that session name that we used before, InfoSec Web Server Debian, and save it again to make sure that the next time I log in, When I specify by double clicking, I have those settings saved. If you have any questions on this, let your instructor know.